December the 7th, 1941. As that day was dawning, some 360 planes of the Japanese Imperial Navy were in flight toward the target site of Pearl Harbor in the islands of Hawaii. In command was this man, Captain Mitsu Fujita, considered Japan's most experienced pilot. At 7.49 that morning, he gave the command to attack. Within those next few hours, the United States experienced its most devastating single attack in history. Within a few months of that date, the United States was to strike back at Japan by a surprise attack on Tokyo. A mission designed and led by Colonel Jimmy Doolittle. This specially selected group became known as the Doolittle Raiders. The critical plans of that mission being interrupted forced an early launch of the 16 B-25s from the carrier deck of the USS Hornet. As the planes reached Japan, a surprise attack was made on the city of Tokyo. The 16 aircraft then made a vain attempt to reach mainland China for a place of refuge. Running out of fuel, all 16 planes crashed along the coastal areas of China. Of the 80 men, three were killed, eight were captured, of which only four survived execution or starvation. One of those surviving prisoners of war was young Sergeant Jacob DeShazer, maintaining his sanity through nearly 40 months of solitary confinement. I graduated from high school in 1931, and uh, it was Depression time, and so finally I ended up in the United States military service as an airplane mechanic uh, working on the B-25. And um, by the time uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed, I was taking training to be a bombardier. Uh, I was asked if I would volunteer for a dangerous mission. They wouldn't tell us what it was. But uh, uh, the captain said that some of us fellows would be killed. And uh, that's how I got on the uh, General Doolittle raid over Tokyo. They put uh, 16 B-25s on a 100 aircraft carrier because that was the only way that J Japan could be bombed. Uh, the planes wouldn't fly much more than six hours at that time, and uh, so they had to fly off an aircraft carrier to get to Japan. And uh, 16 airplanes came, 11 of them went to Tokyo. They um, dropped their bombs, and uh, uh, then we flew over to uh, China. And we'd had to go 10 hours early because a Japanese patrol boat showed up out there uh, when we were 800 miles from Tokyo. And uh, that made us go uh, too early, and it uh, made us uh, get to China after dark. We lost every airplane. All 16 airplanes were lost. And uh, one that I was in was uh, over in China around the Shanghai area. It uh, ran out of gasoline. The pilot said, we'll have to jump. So um, I jumped out at 10.30 at night over in China. And it was really something. I was a country boy, and here I was over in China. Uh, my parachute worked all right, but the next morning I was picked up by the Japanese, and um, I spent uh, 40 months in a Japanese prison. There was eight of us fellows captured. Uh, Doolittle and most of the fellows got back to America. Uh, three men were killed on the raid, but um, the rest of them all uh, got back to America except us eight. And uh, they wrote this book, uh, 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. They made a movie, and uh, they dedicated the book to the eight men who never came back. My name's the last one of that list of men that never came back. But this is me. I'm really here. Uh, they uh, didn't uh, uh, know the whole story. It angered the Japanese very much because we bombed Japan. And uh, three of the uh, fellows in, when we were taken back to China, uh, three were executed. And uh, after two years, another fellow died from malnutrition. And so uh, after this fellow died, then the uh, 
Japanese prison officials changed their treatment, and we asked them for the Bible, and we begged them to give us something to read because we were sitting in solitary confinement, and um, we were pretty discouraged. But um, I got that Bible finally, and I read the Bible clear through. I had it for three weeks, and uh, I thought now is a good chance to find out who Jesus really is and why the Christians think so much of him. I started writing it at the first, and I found out that um, there's prophecy about Jesus way back when Moses was on earth. Moses said the Lord himself will come. He was talking about Jesus. And then Isaiah and all the prophets had the same idea. Jesus is coming. And then in the New Testament, it said he was in the world, and the world was made by him. That's who Jesus is. He's the creator. And they knew he was coming, and he was here. And nearly 2,000 years ago, all oh, that made a tremendous difference in my life when I realized who Jesus is. He's God Almighty. And when I found that out, I began to pray to him. And about uh, uh, 10 days after I started to pray, I was sitting on my stool, and it was 8th of June, 1944. And my Bible, I had been reading this Bible, but I laid it down on the floor. I looked down there, and it said, in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Well, you know, I knew those conditions were met in my life. Uh, Fourteen months later, I was released from prison. But before I was released, uh, the Lord showed me that the thing to do with my life was to go back to Japan and tell the Japanese people and tell Captain Fujita and all that I could reach that Jesus Christ is a creator and he was here and he died for our sins and made it possible for us to have eternal life. And uh, we saw our picture on the front page of the Japanese newspaper many times. And uh, the Japanese people said, come on, we know you're a Christian. A Christian is supposed to forgive. A, pr a Christian is supposed to love. And they said, you're, you were a prisoner of war, and you're showing love and coming back here. We want to hear you. So I had a chance to go all over. I had a good interpreter, and I told thousands of people about Jesus. From Pearl Harbor Day, I spent myself as a most patriotic soldier for my mother country. But four years later, Japan lost the war. I came back to Nara Prefecture and took up farming. At that time, it was the most miserable day for me, you know. However, one day, General MacArthur the Supreme Commanding Officer of the Occupied Forces, you know. I went up to Tokyo, and I got off my train at the Shibuya Railroad Station. And I went out at the front of the station. I saw there an American was handing out a leaflet, you know, to the passers-by. When I passed by him, he gave me one. I saw this pamphlet. That was the story of the sailor's tract, you know. And uh, there was a startling title. I was a war prisoner of Japan, you know. This I uh, read over. And this inspired me, you know, yes. to get a Bible thing. I never <laughs> read the Bible. At that time, I was 47 years old. And uh, during my 47 years, I had uh, never heard the name of Jesus, you know. I was uh, really lost, lost one. Right. But his story inspired me to get the Bible. And I bought a copy of the Bible, and I too read it to pages eagerly every day. One day, I was reading the Bible. I came to the Gospel of Luke. 
2334. Jesus was hanging on the cross, nailed to the cross, you know. And he prayed, you know, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Right at that moment, he came into my heart, you know. So. I clearly understood what Jesus had done on the cross. He died for me too. Yes, amen. Right away, I accepted him, my personal savior, you know. Then he transformed me, you know. I was a <clears throat> sinner. But he friends on me, you know. Yes. And I accepted him as my personal savior. Since then, I dedicated the balance of my life to serve them, to serve for him, you know. This is my story. How this typical Japanese military officer became a Christian. But you know, it is no secret what God can do. Amen. 